Hello, welcome you all. Good morning, good evening, according to your time zone. Myself, Dr. Swati Chakraborty. Today, I'm very glad that we have Professor Aditya Kumar Shukla with us as a guest faculty for the session Young Dialogue 2.0. Today's topic is media and challenges of countering hate speech. Dr. Aditya is a media education professional with 13 years of experience in teaching, research, administration, and industry with an educational background of a doctorate in journalism and mass communication. Presently, he is working as an associate professor of media studies at Directorate of Online Education, Manipal University, Jaipur. He is worked as a founder editor of the journal Content Community and Communication, a Scopus indexed journal. As an editor, he has edited six reference books. As a writer, published more than 20 research papers and 74 citations, high index three, I index one, Google Scholars. We are happy that Dr. Aditya is with us today for young dialogue, particularly for young students, researchers, and the field experts with the ground reality and fact checking, particularly to counter hate speech. So we are excited to welcome Dr. Aditya for our session today for module three. Thank you so much, Dr. Aditya, for accepting our invitation and the floor is yours. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Swastiji. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me for this lecture. And uh, I hope that I will try to give you a brief idea about how the hate speech is producing in the media and how, how media is behaving. Uh, and I will try to give you some tools also so that you can counter hate speech easily. Okay, so some um, uh, almost 15 to 10 minute uh, session will be hands on on the tools and techniques of the countering hate speech, maybe fact checking also. So uh, I'm a certified fact check trainer from the Google. Uh, so I train a lot of students across India to, to fact check the things, to verify the things. Okay, so uh, as Nim has said that today's session is on media and particularly related to hate speech. And you know that India is facing a lot. And today I, I, I got I got to know that you all are from Kolkata and a lot of violence is there in the panchayat elections in Kolkata, to, in, in the West Bengal today. So you might know that a lot of hate speech is also traveling across. And how to counter that? A lot of things are traveling across. Today, a lot of things are happening in West Bengal in the panchayat elections. OK, so uh, most of you from the Kolkata, so you must be aware about that thing. So uh, I, I will not take much time, and I will share my PPT. Just confirm me once that it is if it is visible to you. So uh, just a minute. Let me share my screen. So if it is visible, please confirm me once. Yes. It's visible to you? Yes. It's, it's yeah. Good. yeah. So uh, so let's start the session for two days. Module, uh, I don't think which is the, the third module of the session of Young Dialogue 2.0. So the topic is media and challenges of countering hate speech. And uh, you all know that who has joined later on. Uh, for them, I am Dr. Aditya Kumar Sukla and working as an associate professor at Manipal University, Jaipur, in India. So, uh, today's uh, content which I am going to cover is understanding media first what is hate speech and why, why counter hate speech? Why to counter it? What are the challenges of countering hate speech? Particularly, we will try to uh, see the Indian scenario most, 
and we will try to have another scenarios too. And how to counter hit is these things we will have in our session today. And when we talk about the how to counter hit speeds, we will have some hands-on practices on some tools too. I hope it's clear to you that what we are going to cover in today's session. Okay. So uh, let's start with very, very fundamental question. I'm just giving you a link in the chat. You just answer on that. Yes, it's pending with a link. You can just go ahead with that and answer what is media? What is media actually? What is media? Just give me answers. I have given you three, three things, three options you can uh, write down there. Are you able to see the screen? Swati ma'am, can you confirm that the screen is visible to you? Yes. Yes. So I got only one, one answer. I think five, six people are there. Okay, please answer it. Yes, a medium, a means, a way of communication, awareness. More answers I need. Just, just to quickly start the session, please go ahead. Quickly do it. A means, breeze of way of mass communication, awareness, a medium. Other people, what are you doing? Please answer. Gives information, okay. Images or videos, which maybe what is media? What you understand about media? Information, medium, images and videos, medium of communication. Great. Go ahead. I got the five answers. It's okay. So, generally, basically, we, what what we are observing here that uh, you just uh, see media as a medium of information. Okay, only the medium of information. But media has a lot of other things too. So, uh, let's stop here and come back to my slides again. I will come. I will switch over in between because. I want to make this session a little interactive so that you can learn better and you can respond in a better way. Okay. So when you say that media media is a means of mass communication, so you are only seeing the one part of the media. Okay. So when you are seeing only one part of the media, you are not well aware about that what media can do. Okay, so you know that media nowadays the media is influencing our whole life. With a smartphone, you are in touch with the whole world, and that is also media. Okay, by which you can communicate, by which you can do wonders, you can do anything. So generally, when we understand, we talk about media, we understand media as a means of mass communication first. And when it comes to, as a means, means of mass communication, it means it is informing you, it is manipulating you too, means it is persuading you, it is making the opinion, it is entertaining you, and it is educating you. So these are the functions of the mass communication when it comes to media. 
it, these are the functions that if it educates you, it entertains you, it inform you, it maybe misinform you, so that the head speech comes a picture. And it can also create the opinion. It can influence you to make the opinion. Okay, so media in broader terms having a lot of influence on our lives, a lot of influence on our lives. Okay, we no one, no one is no one is away from media, no one. Even a recent report I was going through, there is a Google and Ganta report. In that report, they have researched on the language media, especially on language media, and they have claimed that the language media people, the language like the rural people are using more media than the urban people. Okay, and the most, most vulnerable languages they have found out for the misinformation and disinformation is number one is Kannada, then Marathi, then Bengali. These are the three languages they find, found out that these are the most vulnerable languages for the for creating misinformation across the across the country. Okay, so media can do anything. Media is a fourth pillar of democracy, yes. To save uh, our democracy, media is called the fourth pillar of democracy. But here I have a different opinion in that. You have to think critically on each and everything. I never say the students to think what I am saying. I'm saying that it is a fourth pillar of democracy, but you can counter it with a question that the media is doing is this right now. Indian media, of course, doing it right now or not. You can counter that. You can have a counter question for that, okay? So because you you people are seeing that media is biased, media is giving you misinformation, media is disinforming you. A lot of things are there. Everything is connected. So how you can claim that media is the fourth pillar of democracy? But media is the fourth pillar of, of the democracy. If the media is strengthened, you can strengthen the democracy too, okay? So media is also called the fourth pillar of democracy. Media is also called the watchdog of the of society. So when we say the watchdog of society, so when media is informing you, it means that it is the media, the people, the people who are working in media, they are doing their job to inform you in the perfect way. If they are not doing that job, it means they are not the watchdogs. But media is a watchdog of the society too, because it shows you the mirror. It generally shows you the mirror of the society that how society is behaving currently. When they, they saw the violence, when they saw the love or anything, affection, any type of emotion they are showing on, on a screen, it means they are giving you a mirror that to see that how the society is behaving. So media is also the voice of the, of the society. So when you understand media, it means it is a means of mass communication. It is a fourth pillar of democracy and it is the voice of the society. And when we try to elaborate the term media, you will find out that it, it starts with the books. You can have the print media, you can have the outdoor media, you can have the broadcast media in which the television and radio is coming. And you can have different other types of media. And now we have social media. And even now with the social media, the advancement, advancements are at that level that we are not able to be in the pace of that particular media. Like if you see the recent developments in the media, generative AI, if, we, if I particularly talk about, you will see that every week hundreds of applications, AI applications are launching everywhere. And how they are going to impact the people's life? People are debating on those things. And if you see, a lot of changes are also occurring. Okay, every day I'm, I'm continuously following the generative AI developments. So you will find out that in coming days, it is very difficult to find out that which is the information generated by the AI, which is the information generated by the humans. So it is going to be very difficult for the for us, for us, especially for the people who are working for countering hate speech, working for countering misinformation, working for for the welfare of the society, it is very difficult to find out that how the things are coming from the AI, how the things are changing very rapidly. So the, a difficult phase is coming. Everyone is discussing about that. Okay, you can easily manipulate the pictures, you can easily manipulate the videos, you can easily manipulate the websites. Anything you can easily manipulate. Yes, the people are working towards find out the solution of those things too. But it's a big, big challenge for us. It's a really, really, really big challenge for us. 
So when you understand media, just not see it media as a means of communication, it is impacting our lives very, very rapidly. And I can say rapidly, rather than rapidly, I can say radically. Media is changing radically right, right now. And other piece of change is not like that. Earlier, it was said that, that the media, every uh, at every two years, the media changes its shape. Because every three, two years, you will be having a Google phone, Google phone launched. But nowadays, in every second, media is changing. Every second. So it, it, these are the radical changes the media is having. OK? So with those critical changes, how you can have the capabilities to just counter the things which are not good for the society, which are not, which are which is misinformation or which are creating chaos in the society. So how you can go, how you can do those things in a better way. So you have to learn the things. You have to advance your knowledge, continuously advance your knowledge. Okay, anything which you are getting, you have to learn more and more. Okay, how the things are going to impact in the future. You have to work on those things too. So my next question is, I will again stop sharing. What is your understanding? What, what is your understanding of hate speech? Again, I'm putting a ment Mentimeter link okay. so that you can just answer in the chat. Yes, this is a Mentimeter link. What is your understanding about hate speech? I hope this is visible to you. Please answer what, what your understanding of hate speech. What is hate speech? I've got any answer. Each answer, I will show your answers to. Okay, just go ahead. I got only one answer. Violence. Okay. Let me show you your answers. Okay, public speech. All the public speeches are not hate speech. Provoking, comment something negative, using abusive language, violence, inciting violence, maybe. If any speech is inciting violence, it can come under the, the hate speech. Okay, you can answer it fast, fast, do it fast, very fast. So that we, I can get an idea that what you are understanding about hate speech. Abusive language, commenting something negative, violence, using abusive languages. The abusive language is the one thing which I'm getting from your answers. Any other view if you want to put on? OK, so I hope that you have done with that. The abusive language, I'm picking this keyword. OK, I'm stopping to present it, and I'm Going back to my slides again. Okay, so abusive language is one thing. Just keep in mind. Okay, so I, I got your understanding about hate speech. That you are understanding that hate speech is only abusive language, but what is hate speech? This, this is a very general general thing. This is a very general picture. Can anyone tell what is it? Just be interactive if you want. What is it? Is that the replica of Gandhiji's uh, three uh, 
any kind of communication in a speech not in only in a speech a speech writing or behavior that attacks or uses pejorative or discriminatory language with reference to a person or a group on the basis of who they are okay like if you are a racist you are giving a racist comment to someone it is a hate speech in other words based on their religion ethnicity nationality race color descent gender or any other identity factor if you are doing anything writing is speaking or attacking on anything related to these things it will come under the hate speech okay so even even has decided it and even is continuously working towards that too so this definition i got from the even have uh, if if you talk about how about to date there is no universal definition of the hate speech under international human rights law even the law people are not able to define that what is hate speech even if you see the indian laws too they will not able to find out that hate speech comes under which which type of indian penal code or anywhere okay so the concept is still under discussion a lot of people are discussing it continuously because before social media the the concept wa was there but it is not so much hyped that's why the people are continuously discussing and now it is uh, discussed a lot because it is it is what i can say it is uh, moving as a wild fire the hate speech concept so the concept is a continuously under discussion hate speech can be conveyed through any form of expression including images cartoons memes objects gestures even gestures also uh, comes under hate speech and symbols and it can be disseminated offline or online any type of thing okay so hate speech you can also define hate speech as discriminatory biased by code or intolerant language okay you are prejudiced some some something and you are demeaning someone or you are defaming some someone it is also comes under the hate speech okay so hate speech again comes on the identity factors if you are do, if you are creating any meme or anything based on the identity factors religion ethnicity nationality race color descent gender it will come under the hate speech but also characteristics such as language economics social origin disability health status or sexual orientation among many they are also comes under hate speech so anything if you are putting wrongly with the with, with the aim that it is going to demean someone any individual any group anyone or defame someone any individual any group it will come under the hate speech it is called the hate speech okay they have said that the name is there the hate speech is speech doesn't mean only speech it can be writing it can be in the memes it can be in the graphics or any anything you can put under it is it, it is not always his speech which you are which you are listening okay so i hope that i have made the my concept clear that what is hate speech okay so the next thing is just just read this uh, uh comment of antonio guterres Uh, he is the united nations secretary general in 2023 uh, we must confront bigotry by working to tackle the hate that is spread like wildfire across the internet generally uh, we are not finding this hate speech in the in the uh, in print media or in broadcast media too but we are finding it mostly on the internet on social media so how to tackle it even you even have created a strategy to tackle it how it is uh, how it is difficult to tackle with that particular thing 
so by learning new tools and techniques you can easily tackle with those things you can counter the hate speech easily counter the hate speech okay so the next thing is why to counter hate speech this is the question okay so when it comes to the hate speech generally what 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 potential it is having in the recent years the world had witnessed several mass atrocities in many of these cases hate speech was identified as the precursors to atro atrocity crimes including genocides too so a hate speech is having the potential to incite violence okay that's why you have to counter it if you are not countering it means that you are also supporting that particular violence while the use of social media and digital platforms is spread hatred is relatively recent the weaponization of public discourse for the political gain is uh, unfortunately new but the politics is also behind it every violence is having some politics behind that okay so it also attacks the inclusion of people it it attacks on the inclusivity of the people it attacks on the diversity of any society it attacks on the diversity of any country it attacks on the human rights so these four things are sufficient to counter hate speech okay and uh, you know that uh, history continues to show hate speech coupled with disinformation can lead to uh, stigmatization uh, lead to discrimination or large scale violence hate speech not only cause harm at the personal level it can incite violence it can attack on inclusion diversity human rights it undermines social cohesion and erodes shared values too okay uh, again it is simply it is not the time to sit back in peace if the fire is there it will certainly come to your place also so you have to fight with that fire you have to be against that fire how you can be against that fire how you can do wonders with that fire if you want the sustainable development if you want that human rights to be on the top priority you have to counter the hate speech which is right now used as a weapon to incite violence to attack inclusion to attack on diversity to attack on human rights you have to counter that particular hate speech okay so the next thing is what are the challenges coming in, in front of you when you are uh, countering hate speech online generally online when you are countering hate speech online what are the challenges coming in front of you can anyone from you tell me that what are the challenges coming in front of you if you have ever countered hate speech just make it little interactive anyone having any idea so uh, if you are not having an idea i will give you an idea don't worry about that so uh, when it comes to hate speech the number one thing i, I will uh, explain each and everything one by one the number first thing comes difficulty in the identifying hate is hateful content every human being is biased towards something because we are human beings we have a tendency to be biased okay it may be the confirmation bias or any other type of bias we have the biases with us and so it is very difficult to identify what is hateful content maybe it is hateful for you and it is not hateful for others but overall if it is creating any type of chaos in the society it is a hateful content if it is defaming someone it is a hateful content you just recall your understanding about the hate speech yes it is very very difficult to find out that it is a hate speech like if you are working some particular party or for some particular political organization uh, you may be that, that the thing which this that particular organization is circulating continuously it may not come under your lens of the hate speech but it may be hate speech for others who are identifying hate speech okay so difficulty in identifying hate speech to find out because we have we are having biases the first and foremost quality as a if you want to counter hate speech you have to generate in yourself that be neutral to all things if you want to identify the hateful content be objective 
be unbiased you can easily identify that this content is going to create some problem in the society okay and one more thing whenever you find any content like any image on whatsapp group or any video on whatsapp group which is igniting your emotions maybe those those are negative emotions or positive emotions you must create a red flag for that check that content that content is that content is actual information or not you have to check that if any type of content like why why we we are we are coming the trap of the hate, uh, trap of the hate speech because we are having our own vices and apart from that we are very emotional from inside and if if we see that those particular content it will ignite your emotions if anything igniting your emotions may be negative or in a positive way you have to create a red flag for that and you have to check for that content you must check for that content the second thing is no strong regulation or legal framework is available right now till now no legal strong framework is available till now there is no availability of the things okay so you have like everywhere if you see the indian laws too you will not find out that anything is written like hate speech yes law of defamation is there many other articles are there but you you will not find out the any legal framework for the hate speech this is one more challenge uh, in front of us that if you want to report the hate speech that with which particular thing you will go what you will see in that what you will uh, put in the report okay one more thing this is a very challenging thing political support political support money and muscle power i will uh, have both things together when you are saying the political support money and muscle power this is the primary cause right now if we talk about the indian scenario this is the primary cause of the misinformation in india the political things because we are very we, we are a political uh, animal simply if i say all the people who are having the voting rights they are the political consumers consumer of the politics and politics want to just manipulate them political support money and muscle power is there and it is also supporting the hate speech lot of fake accounts have been created lot of fake things are generating and people are just continuously continuously doing uh, forwarding the hate speech or hateful content or misinformed content to the people just manipulate them because they are having certain agendas they are having having certain uh, certain things to achieve they are having some aim nothing in this internet world or nothing in this world people are creating without any objective without any aim they are having some aim that's why they are creating something okay so these are also creating the problem and the people who are accounting those things they are not having the support even the, the support of the society too even they are not having the money even they are not they are not having the powers if you are not having those things and how you can counter the hate speech in the in the in the, in the, in the internet or anywhere if you want to counter that for that you have to want, you have to create a strong network of people where you can fight very easily you have to create the strong network of people you have to collaborate with the people who are fighting for the hate speech then the last thing is lower level of media literacy this is a very fundamental question i mean if i ask that what is media literacy you might not answer that what is media literacy media literacy means that analyzing the media correctly reading analyzing the media correctly are you reading the media correctly like if i give you one example that every media platform every media platform if if i talk about only social media every social media platform or social networking platform is behaving differently yesterday you got one more platform which is yesterday or day, day before yesterday which is called threads okay and meta has launched that particular thread and in 7 hours they got 1 million users in 7 hours this is a this is a record okay so when this is a record 1 million people all across the globe has joined the the thread in only in 7 hours so you see the potential of those social media things if you are not reading the things clearly if you are not analyzing the things clearly how can they create the problem 
anyone can put one sentence of misinformation in the thread and it will reach to the one million people with one click. So you people like as an intern or as, as, a, as a media person or maybe as a because everyone is related to media everyone's life is impacted with the media okay so when you are having media in your hands and you are continuously utilizing that media you, you, you if, if i give you the recent data the consumption of the internet in india per person is more than six hours and more than four hours they are spending on social media per person average right now more than four hours if you are spending for four hours on the social media and you are not able to utilize that particular media for the welfare of the society or for the welfare of yourself as an individual or for the welfare of the nation there is no meaning to use that particular media so for that the media literacy is required you have to learn that how to read media clearly you have to identify the misinformation you have to discriminate between misinformation, disinformation, or any other type of information. You have to analyze the things that how these things are going to impact the public. OK, so the lower level of media literacy is also a challenge. Yes, nowadays the people are trying to inculcate the media literacy at every level. OK, like if, I, if I tell one thing, like this, this, this is just my research that I found that a lot of astrological misinformation is there on YouTube. And who are most supported with that astrological misinformation? The rural people, the rural women, because they are not knowing. Some someone is coming and they are giving some idea to achieve something, and the rural women start to follow those particular things. Yes, this is a very yes because it is a religious thing, so it can be a problem that when you are countering that particular astrological misinformation, you must be astro astrologist. But the thing is that it is impacting public. At Cool. So the thing is, you have to be media literate to counter hate speech. Okay, media literate in a better way. So there are a lot of things you can learn for the media. By the, even you can learn by the media. You can learn a lot of things through YouTube and through other channels. A lot of freely available things are there. Okay. So these are the challenges of countering the hate speech. That you you can uh, how you can counter that. So. Uh, when you are countering the hate speech, how to counter it? This is uh, this is one thing. How to stop it? Okay. So uh, there is a five-point formula given by you and itself. Okay, so th this is a five-point formula. Number one thing is pause. Whenever you are seeing any information, refrain from making any hateful comment yourself and are relying such content, whether online or offline. First, you have to stop yourself. This would all act responsibly to stop the spread of hate, hate and misinformation. You have to stop yourself first. You will be surprised if I give you one fact that the WhatsApp family groups are the are the, are the most uh, vulnerable groups where the misinformation occurs. WhatsApp family groups. So I have to start counting that misinformation into the family groups. Everyone is adding the box of family groups. Okay. And a lot of misinformation is coming through the WhatsApp family groups because you are the digital natives. Maybe you are you know born after the uh, coming of the internet, but the people who are like your father, your uh, your grandfather, or anyone who is in that group, they are digital migrants. They are not knowing that how to see the information. What is the correct information? What is not the correct information? You have to pause yourself first. Okay. And the people around you first to counter the hate speech or to spread the misinformation. Just start with yourself. Pause. Never comment any hateful thing on the social media. Just keep, keep yourself. Uh, Give yourself a thing that you will not never commit. Okay, never write anything which is hateful on the social media. Never write anything if you want to talk of that speech. First, stop yourself. The second thing is fact check. Fact check to detect false and biased information, including hate speech, 
propaganda. Always be sure to check the content origin from where the content is coming. Try to find out the source of that particular content. Okay, with the help of search engines, set checking tools, and other reliable sources, we can easily find out it. Okay, a lot of things I will I, I will I will also tell you that how you can find out the, the things uh, with the help of the search engines. Like uh, I will tell you the some some tools that how you can uh, just go with the help uh, with the help of Google Lens, you can find out the uh, content or the image is wrong or uh, mis represented or it is put it in the different context uh, context. Educate self and others. You can help raise awareness of, of hate speech online or offline simply by engaging with your family and friends. Just put the conversations about how we can contain can harm societies. You to, yeah, first you have to educate yourself. Right today, you are getting a lot of things from this system. Okay, you have to just pass on these things to your family groups, to your friends. Just converse them that. Do you know that how the hate speech is uh, creating a problem in the society? How the hate violence, high hate speech violence is creating problem in the society? How it can harm you personally? How it can harm your family personally? You have to educate yourself, and so that you can easily educate others. Today you are educating yourself towards the media and hate speech challenges of hate, hate speech. You can transfer this knowledge to others easily. You can transfer this knowledge to others. Next thing is you have to challenge the ecosystem. Where is the ecosystem? Okay, which is working towards those things. I have told you that no content is created online without any objective or aim. And you know that when the elections are coming, these hateful content will pick up the rise. The, the, the hate speech content, hate, hate speeches, hate violence, hate crimes, everything will pick up the uh, things when the elections are near it. And you know that the idea as a country is in every time in election. 24 7 they are in the elections. 24 7 they are having the elections. Somewhere the panchayat elections are going on after some time, the uh, uh, state elections will be there. After some time, you will have the uh, national elections or the other type of elections. So continuously, 24-7, when you are in the election mode, you will have the challenge. You, you, you are also having a challenge because 24-7, you have to counter the hate speech. And you also challenge the ecosystem. You can undermine hate content by positive messages that is spread tolerance, equality, or truth in defense of those brings targeted by the hate. You can challenge the hateful content. You can easily challenge the hateful content. Maybe you, you will get lot of things maybe you will, you will get bullied or you will get but uh, you will get bullied or you know, maybe they can counter you too in the reverse but if you are having a proper group a proper group you, you are collaborative in creating something good you are collaborated to create something good no one can challenge you you can challenge a particular ecosystem and you can tell them that this is the hateful content it can, it, it can create the problem in the society you have to put the tolerance, equality, and truthful messages there in the social media domain so that you can challenge that particular ecosystem. Okay, support each other. This is a very, very interesting thing. You have to support each other. Okay, uh, talking in public stands for and extending solidarity to like if someone is this is this is a very, very chal challenging thing, challenging task in India because you may have seen a lot of videos that the people got some accident and people just moving away they are not helping that particular person so how you can support someone when someone is countering the hate speech on social media and you are just seeing that that, that the particular person is trolled and you are not supporting that particular person so as a as a person when you are countering hate speech you have to support you have to extend your solidarity to with the people who are targets of the hate speech they posted that rejecting hate is the responsibility of every individual. Every individual. Okay, it's not the individual. It's not the uh, the thing of only one person. It is a challenge for the whole society. So you have to support each other. Okay. Next thing is you have to report it. Most of the online platform and communities have rules to keep users discussion respectful. You know it. 
you can report easily any content if you if you are finding that the particular content is hateful that particular content is not respectful that particular content is misinformation that particular content is and anything which can create the problem in the society you can easily report that particular content everywhere on twitter on insta on uh, facebook on thread even on any platform you can easily report that particular content and the platform is taking the responsibility to pause that content to stop that content even they are barring the ids they are they are countering the hate speech also okay apart from that uh, apart from that if we talk about you have to educate yourself about on the media ethics a uh, countering hate speech begins by realization that while freedom of expression is a fundamental human right you know this the many time the people are get confused with the hate, uh, free speech and hate speech what is free speech and what is hate speech yes freedom of expression is a fundamental right the emergence of social media has created multiple platforms for the production packaging and disseminating the hate speech so self realization education of media ethics should focus on the rights and the freedoms by journalists so uh, there are role of creating promoting peaceful societies awareness must be raised on the political social or cultural rights of individual okay so you have to create lot of things lot of things lot of cultural rights political rights so so that you could teach the people that how you can counteract the hate speech hate messages okay and as a journalist and this also must be equipped with the with the things which by this they can counter easily okay regulate the social media social media regulation is one thing people can uh, regulation is required yes the laws are coming continuously coming and people are telling about that regulate the social media they are telling them to self regulate but it is very difficult thing to self regulate the things many 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 of uh, the platforms are coming up with lot of ethics even they are challenging to okay but the thing is that you have to be self regulated or regulate the social media okay you have to monitor the trends you have to report the trends properly like if you talk about indian penal code under section 153a 153b 295a 2998 5051 and 5052 it declares that word is spoken or written or implying signs of any kind of visual representation that promotes disarmony disharmony enmity hatred or any type of ill will or offense or insults on the basis of religion ethnicity culture language religion caste community race etc it is a punishable offense this is this is ipc 153a 153b 295a 298 5051 if you want to report you can report it with the indian penal code also okay that the hate speech term is not used anything which is creating hatred in the society in the religion ethnicity culture language re regions caste community anything you can report that easily there are other laws also like the uh, representation of people's act information technology act unlawful activity act and several others are there you can just combine it and you can report that particular thing but the main thing is if you are not knowing that what is hate speech what is not hate speech how to counter it how not to counter it you are not able to report it properly okay so for that i will try to give you few tools i will give you some hands on practices that how you can go how you can identify sources from where the information is coming okay so for facebook for twitter i will uh, tell you uh, some tools okay so uh, i'm stopping to present this slide here and i'm coming back to one more thing like uh, few tools i will try to give you that how you can just counter the hate speech if you want okay so you can easily do that you can easily do that a lot of things are there why this you can counter the things if those tools are still working even new tools are also coming i will uh, let you know few tools that why which you can uh, do wonders okay so uh, one thing that just just uh, just just i am asking like if you are getting some information from some page of facebook how you will check the page is right or not have you ever checked those those particular things no 
So the thing is, like, uh, I'm just going to share my Facebook ID because I can share that only. I'm not going to share anyone else ID. Okay. So the one thing is, this is my Facebook ID. Okay. And I have one Facebook page too. Like, I'm creating some misinformation with this page. Okay. This is my page. You can easily get the access of that thing. Okay. So on this page, you are able to see a lot of things lot of things there is one tool that, like if you go on the page this is about if you see this about things there is one tab called page transparency you will get all the information from where the things are coming like this is the page id this page is created on this date even you can get the admin information also the see all if you go on see all you will find out that who has created this page who are the primary people who are handling that page and where this page comes from. Okay. So when you are seeing that the particular information is coming from particular ID, you can easily see that that ID is created on which date or why uh, which thing. Even uh, one uh, very interesting tool was that which is called Crowd Tangle. Right now, the uh, when the meta is created, they have stopped uh, utilizing that particular tool. But you can find every information in the page transparency things and you can go that who are the followers even even you can go in the follower list and you can easily check that whom the person is following and you can get a lot of idea that yes that person can create the hateful content okay so you can go in the page transparency easily and you can find out maybe you will find out one, uh, one more difficulty that the profile is logged if the profile is logged what you will do what you can do there is no, this is a challenge that the profile is logged. So one thing is there that uh, if, if the profile is logged, you can get the ID of that particular profile. Easily you can get the ID of that particular profile. How you will get the ID of that particular profile? Just click here and go in view page sources. Okay. When you go in the page sources, here the, the, this data will come. So it is not clear, cannot. Uh, see what you're showing. Just a minute. Let me reshare it because I have shared only one window. That's why it's not showing you. Just a minute. Stop presenting. Let me go back. So this is visible you now. It's visible. Uh, yes, sir. Window window is visible. So my ID is visible to you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. So you can go here and just right click, right click, and go here at the page sources. Just a minute. This the page sources view page sources, and you can do only control U. Okay. So what you can do here, you will see now that the new page is opening. OK, new page is open. These are the codes which my ID is having. OK, so just do Control F and try to find out the ID. There is a code which is said that it is the ID of that particular person. Maybe this 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 can also work as an ID, but it is not. One more thing is uh, there that uh, uh, look ID. This page is visible to you. Yes. Look ID up. This is a little complicated thing, so I I would not uh, tell you because you can say that it can be unethical too. But from here you can get it easily. Just copy this ID and put it here. Okay. Just copy this ID and then look up the look up for the ID. This is my Facebook ID. Okay. This is my Facebook ID. Got it? By this Facebook ID, you can get the information about my Facebook page or the the post which I have made public. Only the posts you can get the which I made public, you can get that. 
like a lot of tools are available you can put that id there and you can search for that and you can get the particular things sir okay? uh, after yeah. copying this copying this digital number yes where do we have to go and like place it so that we can just, find the just, just a minute let me open that id also just give me a second I forget that particular ID. So wait, I will come back to that thing that how you can go on the particular ID. Okay, so uh, we will have another tools also. After that, I will tell you that how you can uh, find out lookup ID. After lookup ID, you can go that particular page. And you can find out that what type of things the particular person is posting. Okay. Another thing is, have you ever used this archive.org? No. No. You have never used this archive.org. This is a very interesting. Few, website. I think. Few. Uh, few. Yes, so I have used it. Yes. For what you have used it? Also. Uh, so for reference, actually finding the books okay. which are not there. So this, this the yes. But this is a very interesting tool to find out the source. There is one Wayback Machine. Just click on this Wayback Machine. It will give you a lot of interesting things. OK? So uh, I'm just going on my ID. Again, this is my Twitter ID. OK? I've just see that some, what, what is what is this? Have explored more than 818 billion web pages saved over time. So people are archiving a lot of things continuously. OK? Continuously, people are archiving things. Like if I put my ID, I will try to find out that someone has archived my page. Yes, someone has archived my page also on in 2020 on this particular date. One time, it is saved one time for February 15. And you can easily go there and you can easily find out that what I was posting on that particular date. Okay, so just see that how the Twitter looks like on that day, particular date. Day. Just see my picture is different. I'm um, just see see that what what type of content I have put it. You can easily find out. Even every political person who is putting the content online, this ID of that particular person is archived. People are archiving that particular thing. Okay. So how you can find out the sources from where that particular information is coming? Okay. Just see this. My total ID is different. Right now the ID is like this. Okay. And that time the ID is like this or uh, even you can find out the closed websites too easily you can find out the closed websites or you can find out the closed websites with this archive.org let me go back one website i will uh, uh any any website if you are knowing tell me if it is closed Any closed website, if it is archived there. Anyway, so if I'm not checking for the website, let me check the page. Just just see uh, the premise of Odi's page. Just put the URL here and see that how much how many time it was archived. Just see the people are archiving. Every minute it is archived. Okay, and you can find out the tweets of the older older tweets too. In 2009, this page is created, and someone has archived this page in 2009, first time on 22nd January 2009. And you will see that what the Modi Prime Minister Modi was posting. Okay, so has protected their updates. So someone has protected the updates from Prime Minister Modi's side. So you can find out the easily what is the source of information from that particular information is coming. So this Vedic machine is also creating wonders. Okay, you can check the URLs, you can check the sitemaps, you can check the summaries. Any website is closed, you can go that. 
or you can ch check that particular website. One more interesting tool is there, which is called Whois. Like, if you want to know the information of any domain, who is running that particular domain, from where that particular domain is running, you can easily put the URL here, domain name, and just click the search. It will find out that from where that particular domain is running. So if you can give me any domain name, Uh, you can use my domain name, that is my platform for dialog. Platform, is the spelling is right. Uh -huh. So spelling, the center check for the spelling. Yeah, dialog.net, dot net. Net. Yeah. Platform for dialogue.net. Okay, just click here. So I'm just giving you some tips that how you can identify the sources from where the information is coming. The internet is slow, it will open. Uh, till till it is opening, I will give you some more tools. Just some that. Okay, so uh, one more thing, everyone is using uh Everyone is using uh, Google Lens. Google Lens is there in the yes. Google Lens is there in the four not yes. yes. Not yes. Okay. So Google Lens is doing wonders. If you put anything like it can give you the reverse search, you can accept the text also from the pictures. You can accept the text from the PDFs and from anywhere you can extract it. What you have to do generally, like if you want to find out the particular information is correct or not. You have to just take the screenshot of the particular information, put it in Google Lens, it will extract the things from there as a text. Maybe it is in a different language, but it can translate too. You can use the Google translation also. Okay. I think it is this particular page is not opening. That if this is correct, let me check. Yes. So with the Google Lens, you can do wonders. You can you can Seriously, do wonders. I don't know why it is not connecting, but domain. I think I think internet due to internet. Yes, it's due to internet. I think so. Yes. So because yeah, because uh, my website is with domain. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, maybe it is with any any anything. Okay, it is with Google or anyone. You can go with the who is, and you can find out the domain name easily. Who from where it is hosting, from where it is the page is running, who is running the page. If the information is available, otherwise, uh, few more tools and techniques are there. Like some domain search search tools are there. You can find out from there too. Sir, if One you more... just uh, share uh, the all the links in the chat box, so it will be saved, and uh, uh, we can use it later on for patrons. So. Just a minute. This is the who, who is. Uh, uh, this is the look idea. Idea. You can find out the ID. Okay. And I have told you the Facebook page transparency and those things you can uh, do with the Facebook. Okay. So. Uh, those platforms and uh, one more thing which I have told you, which is archive.org. Okay, so and in that, we are having Babak machine. Okay, so bab.archive.org. If you go there, you will find out uh, older pieces and older information. So these are the three links I have given you. One uh, more thing which you can use for uh, searching, which is Google Lens. Okay. You can easily download it. You can easily download it, and you can uh, do the information check. Easily do the information check. It can work on images. It can work on text. And it can work on different languages, too, because you can easily translate the things in the Google. Easily translate the things in the Google. And it will provide you the opportunity to translate the things. OK? So, uh, one thing has left. I will. I will come back to that particular thing also. And I, I'm just going to show you one more tool, which is called InBid. 
if you, if you have any information, misinformation in video, how you can do that, how you can identify that particular misinformation. So uh, there is one tool which is called Inbid. It's extension. You can easily download it. Okay. And uh, fake news debunker by Inbid and be verify. Is this visible to you? Yes. Yes. You can easily download the extension. Just see my cursor, mouse cursor here. This is the extension of Inbid. If you click here, these this will open and just open the toolbox. Okay, when you open the toolbox, you will find out these things. Video analysis, keyframe, thumbnails, metadata, video rights. These things you can easily do that. Okay, so for video analysis, like uh, even it will give you the image analysis tool also. It is having more things, data analysis, Twitter SNA, CSV files, even uh, fact set sources, X network. It is, it is a wonderful analysis tools like uh, image forensics. If you are interested in those, the, those things too, you can do the image forensics with this particular tool. But I'm particularly focusing on the video analysis. When you click on the video analysis, you will find out that you can put the YouTube link directly here or Facebook link directly here, number one thing. Okay. Otherwise, you can upload the video directly. Okay. Like if I go in the keyframe analysis, you can put the link directly here, any URL. I'm just giving, this is an extension, Google Chrome extension, and you can easily download it. If I am having the file, I can directly upload that file from my computer. It will create the keyframes of that particular video. And in the, those keyframes, you can easily identify that what sort of editing has been done in, in that particular thing. OK, right now, because a lot of people are using it, so it's due to internet, it is showing like this. Otherwise, you can upload the video easily, and you can uh, do, uh, do that. Direct links you can upload from Twitter, from Facebook. You can put the direct links there. And you can just extend the video. Like just a minute, if any Twitter video is there, copy video address. I'm just copying one video address and pasting here, and just see what is is doing. The information is not so lengthy. It's a lengthy video. I want a short video to start that. It's a lengthy video, actually. So you can have the short video, then you can upload directly, because it will take time. It requires time to up in uploading the videos. OK, so in that way, you can analyze the videos, too. After analyzing the video, like you are getting the thumbnails, you are getting the keyframes you can put into the reverse image search or in the Google lens and you can uh, verify the things. If this video is also not coming, maybe some technical issue or maybe because this particular inbuilt tool, the, all the word people are using who are doing the fact checking things. Okay. People are using this particular tool. So YouTube, Facebook and Twitter videos or any MP4 video file, it will give you the keyframes or the thumbnails or the video rights even even the metadata, if you want to uh, see the metadata of any YouTube video, it can give you. OK, so this is how you can do the things. Uh, this is how you can verify the sources from where the information is coming, actually. OK, so within bid, you can do with the uh, go uh, uh, do the bundles with the video analysis. You can do the video analysis within bid. OK, so uh, let me check if I can get that particular website. But I can tell you that how you can. Uh, find out the. Tool. How you can find out the book ID or the other things. The, I will send the link to ma'am and ma'am will share it with you. 
okay because it will take time to get yes, that sir, id no back yeah, yeah. No so because uh, after putting that particular id you can uh, put the uh, what, what i can say you can put the date from this date from this to this date you want to see the posts of that particular person that particular link will give you the things i will save that particular link with uh, with you and the lookup id you can put there and you can easily find out that from how that those particular uh, persons are just posting the things if the posts are publicly available you can find out a lot of ideas that this type of post that particular person is creating in in the past so that it can create the post in current time too like it is speech or any other thing okay so uh, i hope that uh, it's uh, done for today and uh, i'm just going back to the slides and if any question is there you can uh, we can discuss it on thank you very much okay. so thank you just, so much yes really a wonderful question. session and full of uh, technical support which we missed our previous uh, session so now i think it's fulfilling the entire purpose of this particular internship project and i hope that uh, mentimeter and all the other uh, websites links you have shared this would be really really important for the interns and whoever will be watching this particular session later on so now the floor is open uh, with a big thanks to professor aditya and this is really as mentioned by kanai that this is a really informative session so thank you thank you so much and even i didn't know some of them uh, so this is really informative session for me as well uh, thank you thank so you. much uh, professor aditya this yeah. is really wonderful so now the floor is open to all uh, interns and you can ask uh, if any doubts are there or any insights any question is there you can ask please go ahead if not any question it means that you have grasped all the things which i have discussed otherwise one more thing uh, from my side that you have to practice those tools continuously because if you are not practicing you will not find out that how the two tools are working a lot of new things are coming to like ai how to counter the ai generated content if somebody is generating content through ai how will counter that thing okay so terminating it is vital the plagiarism check but still for the fact checkers it is very difficult to identify that the particular content is generated through ai or the person is has created the particular thing so lot of new challenges are also coming you have to uh, be very very well versed with the practicing of new tools like ai is coming in the journalism to ai reporters are coming even the ai anchors are coming so lot of things are changing very very radically changing and you have to be with the pace of the those things because technology is not knowing what is right what is wrong technology is not knowing the people who are using that particular thing only they are knowing that what is right what is wrong so if you want to make a ethical society you have to use a technology in the right way and not wrongly so it's totally depend on you that how you are going to you utilize those tools and how you are going to counter the hate speech or misinformation or disinformation okay so any question is there you can go ahead sir if uh, in case of any emergency we have to reach you for uh, any sort of information just asking if you will be happy to help or yes if we, if you are having any type of information to check just send it to me i will try to fact check it otherwise one more thing is that lot of fact checking websites are working in india right now if they are countering misinformation continuously okay like if you want to see uh, the uh, content in hindi the vishwas news is one and those are the ifc certified websites international federation of uh, uh, international fact checking uh, network okay so that that particular ifc is giving the certificates to the uh, good websites who are running like boom live is there they are running their websites in in different different languages crescendo is there even the uh, if i talk about the climate change misinformation uh, manga way is there so a lot of things are running continuously people are doing those things and you can easily find out too if you put that particular keyword into the google search you can maybe you can find out that that particular information has already countered already proven wrong so you can do first check with the google search after that if you are not able to do the things you can easily reach to me there is no issue thank you so much sir 
So yeah. if anyone would like to ask anything, um, sir, I would like to request you kindly put your email address. So if uh, any of the intern would like to reach you directly, they can mail you and keep in touch with you. So now I would like to request all the interns. So kindly put on the camera so we can have a group picture together. This would be a really wonderful memory with Professor Aditya for the first time. I hope that we will continue uh, this kind of interactive sessions more and more and with the support from Professor Aditya. And uh, I think this is just a starting because as we all know that AI is going to uh, going to I really don't want to use the word capture, but unfortunately it is uh, the fact that it, it is created by human. But now uh, this is the high time to, to act as per the standard of humanity. Because somehow the humanitarian aspect is going to be missing out. And fear of missing out is much more in the social media yes. rather than yes. fear of missing out of humanitarian aspects so that is really a, a great yes. matter of concern so i really request to all uh, kindly uh, put on your uh, camera so we can have a wonderful memory to create anushka piu and kanai yeah, Pew, uh, yeah, thank you so much, Pew, for, yeah, uh, so, yeah, done. Thank you so much. And uh, I hope that uh, Professor Aditya is also enjoying our session, though uh, we couldn't be able to participate more. But I think this is more of an information because this is very new to us. So very new information for all of us and I'm sure that interns already love the session with their uh, blushing face. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful thank night and good night to you. Take care all and of have you. Have a good day. Have a good day. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you, you ma'am. Good yes. night, ma'am. Take care. Thank okay. you, sir. Good night. Thank you.